Welcome back to Crypto Global News. In this episode, we bring you the second half of my interview with Tim McNamara. The Hub 34 project was named after Bletchley Park in the United Kingdom, where the famous Alan Turing worked breaking German Enigma machine codes, helping to win World War II. The people at Hub 34 see a world of connected and incentivized AI services, chatbots, and IoT devices, trading data and information using the Hub protocol. And for now, the rest of my chat with Tim. So one of the most exciting things that you guys are doing here is you built a, a Google-powered Ethereum-based wallet. So tell me about it. Uh, sure. So crypto is, we believe crypto is too hard, okay? And, and the overriding drive with the, uh, our wallet, the, our Google-powered Ethereum wallet, is uh, as a wallet so easy your mum can use it, okay? There's, um, there are a lot of wallet solutions out there. They're quite specialist, uh, and we we believe in um, the benefits of crypto cryptocurrency uh, for certain applications. But it is too hard for people to use for the broader populace. So therefore, um, the the this wallet facilitates easy onboarding into crypto, easy um, um, transferring of tokens, buying um, buying or converting tokens uh, in the crypto space. Again, it's all about consumer adoption. Mm -hmm. It's all about bringing the crypto message to a broader audience uh, and leveraging the, the, there are some other, other great things we've built in around the um, Google sign-in process, around APIs, around authorization that, that will allow enterprise to more easily um, access crypto and use a security paradigm that they're familiar with, mm -hmm. but from a consumer perspective, make it easy for somebody to get started in crypto. Okay. And that's the key driver for that wallet. Sign in with a pre-existing Google account that you have, one click, you're in, you have a wallet. You don't need so to understand seed phrases. You need to know like protocols and stuff like no, that? No, you don't need to know protocols, no private key management. Now wow. in saying all of that, a very, very important distinction between our wallet and some of the um, some other wallets out there is we do not control your crypto, okay? We don't have access to the private key, which effectively is the key to your cryptocurrency holdings. You maintain your private key within the, your own Google account. It's encrypted, it's split into pieces, but we cannot access your cryptocurrency but you can very easily access it. And that's a key differentiator between some of the other supposed easy to use or custodial solutions out there where in fact the people that own the wallet or have created the wallet also can have access to your cryptocurrency. So very powerful, easy access, but you maintain self-sovereign control of your private key and hence your cryptocurrency. The other project you guys are working on is called Hub 34. So can you give me sort of an idea of sort of what it is and where it's going and all that good stuff? So Hub 34 is building the tools to power the data economy, to allow easy connection between um, devices and people, to allow easy sharing of data, to provide incentivizations for that sharing of data, to drive an interconnected dataverse, okay, whereby we believe the sum of those connected parts can create some pretty powerful outcomes, okay? Uh, but it needs to have technical protocols to allow connection, to allow transfer and trade, and that's all quite technical stuff. And it also needs to have incentivizations to, to drive people to want to share their data and be fairly rewarded for their data. So that's where some of the cryptocurrency components come into the HUT34 ecosystem. So we build technology to allow devices to connect um, trade, transfer, share uh, data and be rewarded for that um, doing those particular activities. So that's the core um, technical components of HUT34, all with the, the broader belief that a connected dataverse can create some pretty amazing outcomes with you know, perhaps even a global super intelligence. You never know the sum of a, a um, well, at least our planet of connected devices, you never know where that's going to lead. Excellent. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I think it was. You know, the, it spent, the, the world computer spent its whole time working out the answer to life, the universe, and everything was 42, I recall. Yeah, after 10 million so, years. Yeah, yeah. so um, we're just, just cranking up to the hut world computer. Mm. 
Excellent, no worries. Um, so, so going with that, because I remember reading the white paper, there's a repeated mention of artificial intelligence. If you look to the future, what do you think AI looks like in five years, 10 years, and how can it be like used and, and manipulated um, for the benefit of people in the crypto space and technology more generally? Well, I think it looks decentralized. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of fantastic decentralized AI players out there building some amazing services, um, machine la language um, services, neural nets, various other AI um, processes. What we're focusing on is connecting those services. We want, to, we want those services to connect, communicate, and transact in the value they add. So if AI service um, one um, manipulates or comes to a certain um, um, conclusion, it's able to easily converse or transact with AI service B or AI service C. So all of a sudden you connect, you, you connect let's call it, there's, a, there's um, in, in IT you have the concept around microservices. So, but a, a globally um, accessible, decentralized pool of AI services all talking to one another, okay, or not, but having the capacity to do that and the incentives to talk to one another. If I take this piece of data and apply my algorithms to it and I add certain value to this data, I can then on-sell that back into the pool, mm. right, and be rewarded for that. And this other particular AI service that, that has expertise in a separate area can take that value-added piece of data and add more value to it. And it can then conversely sell it back into the pool and another service can do the same thing. And you create this, this interchange, this intercommunication between these various disparate services. So it's, it's you know, the, a very broad model of a brain. You know, you have axons and neurons and connected and messaging gets passed around that, you know, that, that sort of biological um, organ. Mm -hmm. Hopefully over time, that's, that's what we want to do. We want to create the incentivization. So the first cell connects to the second cell and oh, then the third cell connects and all of a sudden they start to communicate and route messages to one another mm -hmm. uh, and, and provide their own expertise into that connected network. Mm. That's your hive mind, yeah? That's that's a global hive mind. Yeah. Yes. And we, and we it's it's I don't think those things happen by often by grand design. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you have to provide the right substrate mm. or the tools for that to happen. And things like the HUDX protocol, which is a data exchange protocol, global connectivity, well that's probably there by the web, but certainly global trustless settlement systems which the blockchain allows. It allows two people who don't know one another to transact, mm. just as two AI services that don't necessarily have some sort of trusted connection can transact data trustlessly between one another. Mm. So that creates that, again, coming back to that interconnected global network of um, AI services talking, transacting, and, well, the outcomes are, you know, post-singularity, so mm. it's hard to tell. Mm. That sounds exciting, yeah. So how does one actually um, earn an income, make a profit? Um, you know, where's the actual sort of um, incentive on that side for people who are using HUT34? So the, the, um, yeah, the token that, that drives our eco ecosystem is the entropy token, mm -hmm. uh, and it is a, a monetary system for the provision and exchange of data. Uh, and so depending upon the value add you provide to that system, uh, well, the, firstly the prices you'll get paid for your data provision or your service provision will be dictated by the market. So some, somebody will pay you what they deem your services are worth. So, but you have to create the technical connectivity so that somebody who has a data set or has an AI service can connect technically and communicate and then you need to create an ability for them to to sell that data and be paid in a cryptocurrency, which is all encapsulated within our um, APIs and our HUDX data exchange object. Um, so again, it depends upon, and, and you need marketplaces, you need discovery, you need mm. people to know, oh, well, this data set is here or this service is here and I can easily connect to it. So they're the technical bits. Um, but as far as the pricing driven by the market, as far as what you'll get paid, well, it depends on the service you build mm. and we'll facilitate your service, that, the service you build to easily connect and we'll allow you to actually earn. What you get paid was a bit like, you know, connecting to eBay and if you sell a product that nobody wants to 
uh, buy, you won't get paid. And if you, if you create a high value service, you will get paid more entropy. Um, well, Tim, thanks for meeting. It was really good to see Thank you, you again. Thank you. Thanks, mate. And, it's great um, to see you again. I'll definitely um, be in touch soon. But um, yeah. yeah, good luck with everything. That was exciting times. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Salute. Cheers. Well, I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I enjoyed speaking to Tim. For more on Hut 34, there's a link to their website in the show notes below. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take it easy.